you could spend 15 minutes zooming in, looking around your photo for blemishes and rogue dust spots, or you could spend 30 seconds making a one-click macro to save yourself minutes of editing time for every picture you touch. I'll show you how. The concept is to create a heavily modified tone curve that brings out the textures of an image so your eyes are drawn to anomalies and spots that you otherwise might miss. You could be in any number of photo editing software for this, including Photoshop. In this case, I'm in Affinity Photo. Here's a really simplified example of how this tool can help you out. I have a bright blue background with an ever so slightly darker blue blemish, as if this was a dust spot on your sensor. This sort of blemish is easily missed with the human eye if it's small and we're working fast or we're not zoomed in enough because the brightness and the hue of the blemish are so similar to the background. And that's the key part. The problem is that the difference is small. So let's exaggerate that difference. I'll add two nodes and make the curve stretch from the bottom to the top of the graph. With a tone curve adjustment in just the right spot, we can make the blemish much lighter and the background much darker. Moving the points left and right allow us to find the right place to make the blemish stand out. And as an added bonus, all the colors go wild, which keeps me entertained. The key takeaway here is that the two input values are close together on the X axis and they're converted to values that are far from each other on the output Y axis. We can bypass the guesswork of trying to find the correct part of the tone curve to manipulate by creating not just one, but a whole set of tone curve oscillations so that no matter what tone the blemish is, it'll stand out from the background. I'll explain how to create the curve and at the very same time, we can record the process to make a one-click macro for you to use in the future. If you want to follow along and make your own preset, you can, it's easy. Once you've made the tool for yourself, it's always there, ready to use when you need it. Like with any preset, it's much better to make your own because then you'll understand what it's doing and make it part of your style rather than wrestle with a pre-made preset and lose. In Affinity Photo, initiate your macro by making sure the macro tool is open using View Studio Macro and then pressing the record button. Create a new curves layer and label it Solar 6 Point. This will be a layer above your image that you can turn on when you want to see it and turn off when you don't. Now it's a case of adding points to the curve and making it oscillate up and down a number of times. We'll do six points on this one. This curve takes input brightness values that are close to each other and turns them into output values that are far apart. And that helps because usually blemishes that are tonally similar to the background are very hard to see. But in this case, we're exaggerating their slight value difference to make it stand out. Press stop on the macro recording and give it a label you'll recognize in the future. I'll call this one six point solar curve. With the preset made, I could delete this curve and recreate it with a single click from the library pane. Now the blemishes are obvious and we can use the healing tool to get rid of them. Make sure the solar curves is the top layer or else the curves output will get incorporated into the healing and that'll mess up your image. The process is much quicker because instead of playing hide and seek, the blemishes are out on display waiting for you to get rid of them. Once we're done, turn the healing layer on and off a few times for some instant gratification for all the work you've just done. Then we can turn the curves layer off because it's no longer needed. The number of oscillations change the level of detail. So you could have versions of this macro using two, six, or 12 points that you can test out on each image to see which one does the best job. If you found editing tips like this useful, click on the subscribe button below to discover more videos like this from the channel in the future.